Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Eric Brown and welcome to the third episode of Cold Kombucha. So this is the GT Dave's original kombucha. Okay, so I just opened the bottle and there's a bunch of little bubbles fizzing up here. Something you wanna do is actually to swirl it gently. So it's like a soda, you know? It's got, it's got about the same carbonation of a soda. You don't wanna shake it. So what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the cap's on tight and we're just gonna swirl it like so. Something that you should see right here is there's a lot of stuff still at the top here hold on if you can see right there there's still a lot of stuff at the top so what we want to do is we want to swirl it See that good bacteria right there? That's a little bit of scoby, actually. Oh, you see that? Boom. Okay, just a little forewarning, that is not how you want to pour kombucha. Just kind of like how you're pouring a beer. I don't really know much about beer. I've seen people pour beer, but I know that when you're at like draft houses, you pour them where it doesn't fall straight down because you'll get a lot of foam. So you want to like pour it kind of like this. Oh, it fills up. First thing we're going to look at is color. Hold on. Okay, so I have, a, I have a little bit of a system I'm gonna have when I do this kombucha show. So much like what Gary Vee does with his wine show, we're gonna look at color, smell, and then finally taste it. But here's a little bit of background with the kombucha. Um, GT's Synergy, his kombucha, started from the original SCOBY. So when you're making kombucha, you get what's called a SCOBY, which is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. So, I believe if I'm right with the story, his father's friend gave them a starter SCOBY and that is the same SCOBY that is used in every single kombucha. So it started from that one SCOBY and once you ferment kombucha, that SCOBY grows. It's like a growing bacteria. It's like a growing, it's not, I don't wanna say mushroom. It's not really a mushroom. Um, it's a growing piece of bacteria that just keeps growing and growing to make all of the kombuchas. So this is part of the original uh, SCOBY back in 1995. And that's what every single bottle of kombucha has, which is kind of interesting. It's like that royal hierarchy. And um, he, he sweetens his kombucha using kiwi juice. I know that a lot of people use cane sugar, some of them use honey, use other types of things. Interestingly, interestingly enough, he uses kiwi juice, and I find that really interesting. This is a very basic looking, this is a very basic kombucha. I have little bits of scoby in here. So what does this look like? This looks a lot like the apple cider, the apple cider vinegar. And uh, it looks like a apple juice, it looks like a beer looks like pea, whatever, uh, pea should, if your pea looks like this, you need to drink more water. Anyways, this looks like an apple juice, just color. This is going to be the gold standard. This is going to be the gold standard because I believe that GT Synergy is the best kombucha. Now, this is what I'm saying today, uh, December 16th, 2020. It might change next year and it might change over time. This is the only kombucha that I know that is just raw original kombucha right here. So we're gonna give this a little smell. It smells very vinegary, you know, and we, we kind of expected that. So, I mean, we're not gonna swish it around. There's no alcohol in here or very small amounts, like grape juice has alcohol as well. Your cough syrup has alcohol. 
your apple juice at the store has alcohol. Probably more than this, maybe. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Let's give it a whirl. Let's give it a little taste. This is actually really good. I want to say it tastes like apple just to trick my head. Trick my head. But this is, this is just what raw kombucha tastes like. I would say I'm used to the vinegar taste, but on a scale from zero to 10, zero being water to 10 being like that straight up white vinegar I tasted, this is about like a three to four mark, really low. I actually want to say two, but because I'm so used to that, hold on, there's a fighter jet going by. But because I've had so much kombucha and I'm used to the taste, I wanna give it like a three or four, maybe even five if it's your first time trying. Definitely smells like a, like a vinegar taste. Tastes like a vinegary soda. Let's read the back side of this. <clears throat> In 1995, I began bottling kombucha as a teenager in my parents' kitchen after witnessing my mother consume it religiously during her battle with breast cancer. Her experience inspired my purpose to introduce this sacred brew to the U.S. in its purest, most potent form for all those seeking better health. Over two decades later, my mission remains stronger than ever to offer the best kombucha you can find. GT Dave, founder. History of original. This batch was born in 1995. It was the first flavor and didn't receive a name until GT released a second flavor the following year. Oh, how has GT's kombucha changed your life? Tell us your story at 25th at drinkgts.com. Huh. Interesting. I would definitely say packaging wise, this bottle looks very nice, very kombucha-y. I don't know, if, should we zoom in? Let's zoom in, because there's a lot of stuff at the bottom here. Can you see that at the bottom? Here. I don't know if you see that or not. See those, oh, there we go, this is a much better angle. You see all the, the chunk here, chunk here, that's chunk here. That's a little bit of the SCOBY. That's what naturally forms. The thing is, we're drinking something alive right here. Like this right here, this isn't like a, this isn't like a steak where it's like dead meat. This isn't like a fried food. Like we don't do any of that here. We're trying to raise our fr frequency. This is something li living, it's like, like yogurt, we're drinking, we're eating something living when we're eating yogurt because we're eating those live cultures of bacteria. Really good for your gut. I really actually like this taste. I would say there's a little bit of sweetness in here, which is what I want to say is the is the kiwi. Let's um. So we're gonna have to swish it again. And if you set this down and you wanna drink it more, like you're gonna have to do a little bit of a swirl, right? So what I do is I start and I move it level. I do a one round level and I move it upside down. And then if I'm not drinking it for a bit, I'll just let it upside down like this for maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever. Um, and as you see, there's no more, uh, hold on, let's zoom in again. As you see right here, there's no more stuff at the top, like it's all gone. So that means it's all it's all in the juice. It's all, in, there's no juice in kombucha, but it's all in the kombucha if you know what I mean. Okay, so it's gonna be a little fizzy. Ready? 
that's the carbonation right there releasing. And then we're gonna pour it. This is the real way, real way you should pour kombucha. For me, I just drink it straight out of the bottle, but I want you to see the color, smell, and taste. You know, those are the three things. So we're gonna pour it like so. Let's give it another taste. There is a little bit of sweetness in here, and I wanna say it's the kiwi juice. Now, when I interview GT Dave, which is maybe someday, I really hope it's someday, um, I really wanna ask him, why kiwi juice? Why don't you use cane sugar? Um, why do you use kiwi juice? I have a bunch of questions, and I'm learning a lot more about GT Dave, and he's a really interesting guy, actually. All right, you know, that is it for this episode. This was the third episode of Cold Kombucha. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Please comment on this YouTube video, or if you're watching on Instagram, please follow or comment on Instagram. Just give me some sort of engagement. This is something very new. Uh, this is like something pioneering in the kombucha community. I really want to get more into the kombucha community. Uh, if you're watching this and you own a kombucha store, for example, if you're GT Dave, or if you're someone like, oh shoot, who are the two ladies that worked at Home Kombucha? If, you're, if your name is Jamie Danick or Michelle Mitchell, please hit me up because I would love to come back to the uh, kombucha draft house in bend oregon i would love to make a visit again and interview you guys because this is what the show is about it's about learning more about kombucha and the people that make it so that is all if you want to stay for a little bit of other words and other little bits please stay So what I have written down here is first drink, give a background of the beverage, which is what I was talking about with this and the original SCOBY and the kiwi juice. I talked about that a little later. Um, color, smell, color, smell, taste. So color, you know, I did that. Smell, like you gotta get your nose in it. Like you have to like almost pick your nose with, with the drink. Flavors, initial splash. You could swish. Vinegariness chart. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna call that the V factor from now on. What is the V factor? And then flavors and notes. Fizziness. Now the thing is, this is bubbly. So doing this really makes me want to burp. So it kind of hurts to. What I might do is I might just swish it. I don't know if the oxidation is really doing anything. Like if it's like wine and you know you gotta like swish it around, get some oxygen in it. Maybe I also need to train my nose, which is partly why I want to talk to GT Dave so bad, is to learn more about that taste and the smell and how to, how to know really what to look for. Mm. I'm almost done with this bottle. No, it's like halfway done. All right, that's it. We're gonna do the second episode um, right after this, so I'm gonna find another one.